There's arguably no better feeling than setting up a brand new aquarium system. The, sh the octopus aquarium and the shark tank are now up and running and in today's video I'm going to show you how I did it all and give you a basic breakdown of how the filtration system works. Plus some of the problems and challenges we came across uh, in doing so. And when I say we, I mean me, it's just me here. I think we'll have to start with the overflows and how I went about that, what I was originally going to do versus what we ended up with. Obviously when I have the bare aquarium, the next thing I gotta do of course is figure out filtration. We knew we were doing a sump and we need a way to get them down there. When it comes to acrylic, you can just use wood tools on acrylic, like a wooden hole saw will drill through acrylic no problem. Uh, wood saws and routers, everything that you use on wood works on acrylic for the most part. Now originally what I was going to do is use one of these and these are uh, extras from the 2000 gallon aquarium. This is a two inch bulkhead. It's a way for you to drill your aquarium and get water through the wall or through the bottom of it. Drill a hole, stick this in, this goes on. There's a rubber gasket to stop any leaks. I'm sure you guys know what a bulkhead is by now if you've been watching me for a while. And then these little strainers. This was just going to be it. I had, uh, I just had extra. This is like a Frankenstein system that turned out pretty cool. I basically used a lot of extra equipment that I already had on hand. I was going to go another route, but once I was kind of looking for odds and ends, I realized I have everything and there's no reason why I should, you know, build or buy anything when I don't really need to. Besides when it came to these overflows, I thought this was going to be pretty ugly. Pretty sleek for the most part, but it's likely going to be loud and I'm not going to have as much control over it. So I went to my local fish store, one fish, two fish in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, and I saw these little overflows. Now they're only rated for about 600 gallons each, uh, 600 gallons an hour each, which is more than enough for these two aquariums. I do need relatively low flow in the octopus as well as the shark tank. But at 600 gallons an hour, to be fair, I'm turning the water over almost 10 times an hour, what, eight, nine times an hour. I don't want to do the math, you do it. And like I said, we just drilled the hole with a wooden hole saw, installed the overflows, and what I liked about it, and the reason why I went with it, is because the internal box is so small, and the slits in it aren't going to allow for like a shark to get in, but an octopus might. So there is one last thing I gotta do. You need to install this fine mesh. It's a plastic fine mesh, so it's not gonna be able to rip it apart or anything, over top of the slits. I just wanted to do some testing first. Um, I got about a week or so before the octopus arrives. So I do have time to get this over it. The slits are probably a quarter inch wide, maybe smaller, but I'm not taking that risk. Again, the sharks aren't gonna be able to get through it, but I don't, I don't feel that comfortable about the octopus. So we'll definitely install this. And that's basically what I did for the overflow systems. Now, before there's even water in the tank, one of the things that I just had to do was clean the tank. I wanted it to look brand new because these tanks are brand new. I just built them. I want them to look brand new. So I took some of my Fritz glass and acrylic cleaner, which works really good on acrylic, and cleaned the insides and out of these tanks because they definitely needed it. And then the annoying part, nothing out here is level. This concrete cement floor was laid in like March. It was still... It's just not level out here at all. So everything has to be manually leveled. Now I made a video in the past, how to level your aquariums and simply just using wooden shims, uh, just bang them under the stand, under the support systems, where the majority of the weight is going to be. But a little hack I like to use is to, when I take my level, I like to put it on top of the tank and then put the shim under it till it gets level to see how much of that shim I need to tap in. So I'm not like constantly going up and down and checking and coming back and up and down. It works for me. Then of course added some sand and pre-mixed some Fritz salt uh, and filled the tanks up. The salinity right now should be at about 1.026. Yeah, so 1.026, temperature 25 degrees Celsius. So this is perfect. Oh, and then the lids. I had some spare uh, double wall polycarbonate panels that we've used for lids in the past. I just had extras, cut them up and put them here, but I made them extra big because on the octopus aquarium, I'm going to weigh these down with like five pound weights. There's no way it'll get out of that. Or at least we'll find out. Yeah. Oh, and then, and then I escaped the tanks. In the shark egg aquarium, we're using more of a sand. It's a crushed coral type sand. 
something that's be going to be soft on their bellies, be able to find their food, yet make them feel at home. I'm not a huge fan of adding substrate to like a grow out tank or anything like that, but uh, the, the sharks that we are getting uh, will probably do a little bit better with sand. The octopus aquarium got more of a fine grain crushed coral. This will give him a little bit more grip to go on. Uh, there's only a couple rocks in there right now and you'll notice the tower's gone. I wouldn't say I had a huge problem with the octopus tower. If you guys don't remember, I built this like almost like two and a half foot tall tower that comes out of the tank. I had a few little issues with it and uh, I had to fix a couple. It didn't break or anything, but I had to add some stuff to it. To I, uh, I need a couple days for this. That video will come out shortly. Okay, so as for the filtration, like I mentioned, it's like a Frankenstein type setup. As the water overflows, we have a main one inch drain where the water's coming through the tank. It drains here. Uh, and then this is the emergency in case this ever gets clogged. They both go into a filter sock. That's what this, these two pipes are as well. I just painted them black. I kind of started painting everything black and then I realized, well, now there's green and there's gray and there's black and there's red. I just gave up. There's too many colors to cover. Um, but I did have in, uh, good intentions with these two pipes. They go into a filter sock that I simply clamped onto the side with a little clamp. I was going to build and rig something up, but I, I, I mean, this works and I've done it before. Uh, many times it just hangs there and when it's time to uh, change it, a lot of times it gets too heavy and it sags. So that's when I know it's like, okay, time to change that. And very easy to change, take the clip off, remove the filter sock, replace it or just clean it and that'll be it. Uh, once the water's uh, pre-filtered and into the sump, we have a large protein skimmer. Mind you, it's not skimming that great right now because I took out the tower uh, extra water got into the sump, of course, that tower water had to go somewhere and I had to turn the skimmer down, letting less uh, water into it. Um, but basically, as you could tell, see how it's like a cloud of bubbles? Literally a cloud of bubbles. You can't even see through it. You can barely make out that there's, it's cloud. It almost looks like smoke. As in comparison to when I was testing this uh, with fresh water, you can notice that the bubbles are much larger. And that's why a protein skimmer works in salt waters because they're able to make these fine tiny little bubbles and as they rise protein is being attached to them the protein molecules are attached to those tiny little bubbles um, and as they rise they get to the surface they burst in the cup and then we can remove that protein i wish we could do this in a salt in a freshwater tank and technically you can but the skimmers are floor to ceiling type deal they're not practical at all um, this is an open type uh, an open concept sump so there's no baffles or anything. It's a bare 40 gallon tank and things are just kind of propped in there. Oh, I did build a couple of acrylic platforms. A lot of this I didn't film because uh, I was just kind of doing my own thing and enjoying the build. But um, the reason I built these acrylic platforms was simple. The output of this reactor that we're gonna get to in a minute, it was too low. Uh, the output was like butting up against the brace and I couldn't go under it, so I have to try to come over it, but I had to lift it by an inch and a half, so that's why it is. And look at, this is all the plumbing that I had here. I gotta pick up some one, in, one and a half inch pipe and just go boom, boom, right down. And that's, that's the only thing making noise right now. This makes a little bit of rattling noises, like uh, from all the uh, media in there that I'll explain here in a second. But I raised these two up, which allows more water in the sump, fix that little problem. Um, and then of course, uh, once we're through with the skimmer, we have the biological uh, reactor. Basically, water's being pumped in through this little pump at about 300 gallons per hour. It rains over this uh, fluidized media, and then there's an air pump pumping in air at the bottom. So the water, pre-filtered, uh, unfiltered water is coming through the top, going through the bottom, and then it kind of overflows over here. And I can control the height of the water with this uh, gate valve right here. Now, if you're not familiar with what a fluidized reactor is, or fluidized bed media, uh, or a fluidized bed filter, or a fluidized filter. I used to make them all the time. We have these uh, little media. They are little plastic, neutrally buoyant uh, media. And basically what this does is if we put this in water, <clears throat> it's going to float, but you can like tap the water surface. I'll show you. So that's going to float. But if I tap it, where are you? 
But if I tap it, oh, it doesn't come up right away. See that? So it's like, can you see that? It almost suspends in the water for a second, right? Now what that means in a filtration system, as ammonia is present in the system and creates a demand for uh, nitrifying bacteria, which lives on surfaces, it doesn't live in water, it needs a surface to live on, it's going to attach to this stuff. And because it's neutrally kind of buoyant, that means that it's no, once even a little bit of bacteria is on this and it becomes cycled, it no longer really floats. It kind of suspends in the water. And just a little bit of circulation, like air bubbles, for example, can cause it to fluidize and kind of go nuts like this. Now see, and the benefit of this is very simple. As the bacteria is cultivating on the outside of this, only the strongest, the youngest, and most efficient bacteria remains. Because look at it all smacking into each other. All that older and dying and dead bacteria, you know, that mulm that you find in your tank sometimes, is all getting knocked off. And while we do want only the youngest and most efficient bacteria to be present, like a supercharged bacteria type of thing, there's also something to be said about allowing bacteria to live out its life cycle. So if we look in the center, you can see it has a protective area. So when these are clashing together, the insides are not touching at all, allowing for all those microbes and bacteria to live out its entire life cycle. The benefit, of course, to a fluidized filter is that they are incredibly efficient and next to no maintenance. If you are curious on how to build them, I've done tons of projects on them. I built them into sumps, bottles, you name it, every type of, built them into the back of a tank, into the side of a tank, into barrels, every type of fluidized filter, because I used to only do them. Then it, it just became a little too cumbersome. They were huge, they're a little bit noisy. They got expensive, because you need to buy the media, the, the container, the pump, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I, you know, I just wanted to show you guys how to, that you can run, it doesn't matter the method of filtration so long as it works for your setup. And I showed you guys every diff, every type of uh, method of filtration there is. And if you want to truly, oh, well, I guess I guess do a shameless plug. What's up, Oscars? Ooh, check the plant to take out. This is actually looking really good. Needs some fish though, doesn't it? Plants are doing well. Got control of all that algae. Just did a, just siphoned it out manually. Um, and then of course, uh, did a water change. That was it. Anyways, back to my shameless plug. I wrote a book titled The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself Handbook for the Do-It-Yourself Aquarius. It's massive and there's an entire chapter on filtration, not only talking about and showing you in detail how to build these types of filters, but the why and discussing the bacteria and how to actually calculate how much media you need based off the fish you're actually keeping and what bacteria actually require. It's actually my favorite chapter in the book. Yeah, so after going through the fluidized bed filter, it overflows over here. And then you guys might want to see, I've got a pump back here. Believe me, I know it's hard to see it. I don't know how we'll get an angle on it, but because everything's dark. Oh, there you can kind of see it there. It's a uh, 2000 gallon per hour pump. Um, we might be able to see it. Yeah, there we go. Right there. 2,000 gallon out per hour pump and we split it here in either direction for either a tank and we control the flow to each tank with these little ball valves. So if I want more flow to go to this tank, I turn the ball valve down for that tank type of deal. But right now, they're just equal. I don't need a ton of flow to each aquarium uh, and I have about 400 gallons an hour going to each one. 70 gallon tanks, about five times an hour. That's gonna be good. We're having, we're gonna have shark eggs in this for a couple months, so don't need a ton of flow in there. Tank just needs to be clean and cycled. And the octopus aquarium, if we need to increase the flow, of course we can, but uh, we'll keep things a little docile for now. Let them, let them get used to it. And they are coming within like, I think it's like in a week or two. They are returned via these little half inch, and this is me not uh, just being lazy, I gotta put on some hose clamps, but uh, returned via these like uh, half inch ball valves and some lock line. Uh, and if power ever shuts off, you'll notice that the, the overflow, or the, I'm sorry, the output is above the water surface. So it's a siphon break. If these were below the water surface, when the power shuts off, water's gonna siphon all the way down to the sump as much water, like if this was two inches below the water surface, two inches of water is gonna overflow into the sump. All these little things you guys gotta know about. So obviously I can't just take those, the octopus and the shark eggs and add them to the tank. It's not cycled, I'm going to have to cycle it and I wanna do it relatively quickly. So how am I going to do that? Well, 
After the skimmer and after the, bi uh, the bioreactor, there's a bit of a channel back here and there's tons of space, but I'm gonna use that space and take these bio blocks from Kevin's tank. I've got a bunch of them in here. These are cycled ceramic media and toss them in there immediately cycling the aquarium. Sort of, because the octopus is so small and the shark eggs really aren't creating any sort of ammonia, that bacteria could potentially die off. So I'm going to also add in some Fritz bacteria to kind of supplement it and keep a very close eye on how everything is going. To be fair, I won't need to add a ton of bacteria to this tank because there's not going to be a ton of bio load, at least at first. Oh yeah, you know what I did recently? <laughs> I trained the archer fish to spit. If you guys want to see that video and how I did it, let me know in the comment section below. That tank needs a water change. So that's basically everything about these tanks, the filtration, how they were set up, etc. cetera. Um, a little boring per se, but I do want this video to be out there to kind of reflect back onto in case anybody's wondering how everything works. I likely won't talk about it again besides like little updates on it. The focus is definitely going to be on the animals, figuring out the octopus, uh, observing the sharks. It's just going to be absolutely phenomenal. And if you can't wait to see those things, and if you're not subscribed to this channel yet, make sure you do, or you're going to miss it. I gotta get back to work on the tower. It's a, it's a bit of a problem. I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs>